Hey everybody, it's Brett Hickman with Sarah Toyota. I want to go over a technology with you that Toyota has called SmartKey. It's a great system and has uh, gone through uh, several different iterations. First, let's talk about some of the differences it has with the other keys. We're going to do that by going over those keys. This is your valet key. Many of you are probably familiar with it. It's kind of grayish in color. The valet key is not going to unlock your glove box and it can't get into your trunk. It, however, can unlock the door and lock the door and it can crank the car. It's for valet parking and it's for if you bring your car maybe into service department and it's just anybody driving your car and you don't want them to have access to those areas, your trunk and glove box. Then you have a key similar to this that's black and that is your regular key. It would access everything in your car. A lot of times you'll find those on your Tacomas and Tundras and they'll have an extra key fob for the remote keyless entry feature. Then you'll have uh, a new uh, standard looking key that you find like on the Camry for example. Uh, your Scion TC has this uh, same shape and it's that regular key with the remote already built in. You will get a extra uh, valet key. Now, I would like to note that some of our vehicles like our trucks that don't have a locking uh, uh, don't have a locking glove box or trunk you won't get a valet key at all. You'll just get two keys. But with most Toyota keys, you'll get three. Another instance where you'll only get two keys is the smart key. And this is the key we're going to talk about. Now, you actually can make this into a valet key. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's talk about this. This key right here, you do not have to get out. It can stay in your pocket. It can go in your purse briefcase. And you can use it for its activation just by having it on your person. You'll walk up to your door handle and you'll touch the back of your door handle and it will unlock the door. From the driver's side, it's only going to do the driver's side door. If you go to the passenger side, it's going to unlock all the doors, assuming you're letting people in. The reason why on the driver's side it only does the one door is so for security, somebody can't jump in on you on the other side as you're getting in your vehicle. Now Toyota used to have a rubber black button on the door handles. That was for locking the doors only. And you would get out and you would press that button and would lock the door. Toyota's gone to a more streamlined look, one that gets away from having a physical button and it has just some slight ridges on top of the door handle. You rub your hand across those ridges and it locks the door. Some other features tied into your smart key system is the lighting. Some of the limiteds that have the smart key system will detect you approaching using the same sensor that turns on your headlamps at night to understand that it's nighttime will we'll know you're approaching and will turn on puddle lamps that are located under your side mirrors. It will also, if you have the dome light activated, turn on your interior lighting so you can see into your car before you get in. Really neat feature. Okay, so let's go into why you would, uh, how you would turn this into a valet key. It's also the same reason you would do this if the battery ran out in this. Just like a regular remote, the battery can run out in this too. No big deal. All right, there is a, I don't know if you can see it, there is a kind of a rocker switch. It says push on it, and you push on one end, and it releases the laser cut key. This is used to lock the glove box. It's also used on the driver's side to unlock the door. Now, if more than likely you'll have your personal keys and everything attached to this, uh, to this portion. So when you remove it, you now have your personal keys. And if you're getting service done or valet, you can hand them this. And now they don't have your personal keys. And also if you've locked your glove box or your trunk with your laser cut key, they now cannot get into that either. There is also a section where this will slide in the tip of the laser cut key and will allow you to twist slightly to pry open the box where you can put a new battery in. We always recommend you go to the service department to do that because just every once in a while you may have to program the key uh, when even if you have put the new battery in and it's the same key you've always had. All right, well I've had the next question I have from customers when I tell them this, uh, how to get into the car if the battery goes out, they said, well there's no ignition switch, uh, it's a push button start. And uh, when you have the smart key system and you get inside the car, you simply put your foot on the brake 
and then you can press the power button and let go and it'll crank the car. So if the battery's out, how do you do that? Well, just because the battery is out does not mean that there is no power left in the battery. It's just not enough power to power the primary functions of the smart key. There is a low powered emitter, however, in the smart key that can still use the remaining power left in the battery. What you do is you take the Toyota symbol side, opposite of where your buttons are, and you hold it against the power button with your foot on the brake. After about three seconds, it's enough for it to crank the car. You just take the um, remote away and press the power button and it will start the car. Now, another question I have is how do I turn on my accessories? In cars with the regular key, you can go one click and turn on the radio only. A secondary click and it'll turn on the radio plus vent, vents will come on, the ventilation, all your dash will light up telling you how much gas you have and things like that. And then the third phase would be of the crank. So how do you do that with the remote of uh, a smart keyless system? As I said before, you put your foot on the brake and press the power button and it cranks. Well, if you do not put your foot on the brake and you just press the power button one time, it's going to turn on that first accessory. If you press it again the second time, again with your foot off the brake, it will turn on the secondary accessory. With your foot still off the brake and you punch it a third time, it will turn the car back off. Only when you put your foot on the brake and you press the power button will it crank. All right, there's one other feature I want to talk to you about that's really cool. And I've even had some customers go as far as tell me this is going to save them on their monthly payment. Hopefully you're not as bad as they are, but we've all probably locked our keys in our car once or twice uh, in our lifetime. Well, because the car can detect this key wherever it's at, and especially if it's inside the car, when you lock the doors and you've left this in the car and you shut the door, it will then unlock the doors with an immediate tone that will just resonate continuous until you turn around and open the door and get your keys out. I've had some customers get home and not be able to lock their car simply because they have left the spare key in the owner's manual when it was presented to them and gone several days of being frustrated because possibly they took delivery of it on the weekend and we weren't open on Sundays. So if you're having that problem, you may want to check your glove box and find out where your secondary key is. I've even had customers change purses and didn't remove this uh, other smart key out of the purse and the purse was in the back of the car. So just remember that if you're having an issue with the car lock and it's making those audible tones, you possibly have another key inside the cabin of your car. Well, I hope that helps you understand the smart key better some. It's really neat, it's very useful, and it's very handy, and it's hard to go back to a regular key after you've had a smart key.